We were recently sneaking around D&D Beyond, and we've pickpocketed several items for today's video. Today, here are five radical homebrew rogue items. Welcome to the Humber Crew. I'm Tony, this is Sean, and we are back doing some stuff in D&D Beyond. We haven't been here in a while. Yes, we love digging into D&D Beyond and some of the homebrew <laughs> sections like monsters and classes, but today we're going to be looking at magic items and specifically ones that you may find on a more roguish character. Now, all rogues need, uh, they need to be sneaky, they need to be able to, you know, kill something, backstab it pretty quickly, um, all of that. So these items are things that we found that are not only somewhat humorous, uh, but also things that can add to the benefits of the rogue. You'll find uses as a rogue in combat, exploration, and social with these five items. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. Okay, over to D&D Beyond. All right, we're gonna start here with a Thieves' Lantern. Now, you know when you're sneaking around and you're... Okay, so not all rogues have dark vision. Believe it or not, as many people usually <laughs> have dark vision, there are some that actually don't. There are human rogues out there after all. <laughs> You know? Uh, so this one here is the Thieves' Lantern, and uh, who's this by? Yeah, so this one's from user Zarek. So this is a really interesting one. Again, just a common wondrous item. Essentially, it's going to kind of shed this 30-foot radius light, similar to a regular lantern, except only the user can actually see the light. No one else can see it unless they can perceive true sight or see invisibility. Now, this thing does run on a flask of oil, and it burns it out once every six hours, so it's not, like, unlimited with it. But I love the idea of being able to have a light source that only you can see. Right. It's a very useful sneaky item, because generally speaking, a lot of DMs might forget that <laughs> as you're carrying a lantern, you're a very big target for some of those enemies. But when you're carrying this one, you're still concealed in that darkness, or whatever you're hiding in, and you have the ability to see within that 30-foot radius. Very useful. Right. There he is. He's right there. Where? <laughs> Where that bright light is. You know, <laughs> Which one? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely a cool one. We love this one here. Um, I know this is going kind of quick with these, but I really just... I enjoy the idea of taking something that is already in the campaign and just kind of building on it. Yeah, and you know? some of the simple items are some of the best ones, including this next one. Now, this next one, uh, if you've ever played any of the Metal, uh, metal Gear mm -hmm. uh, stuff, this will be familiar. I guess. Yes, so get your exclamation point above your head because this is the cardboard <laughs> box of stealth. Again, another common wondrous item. Essentially, it's literally a magical cardboard box. Uh, AC of 10, 1 HP, but as a bonus action, you can don the box wearing it on your head, crouching down to completely obscure your form. Now, the thing is, is obviously uh, it's going to do a, a check there. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a check there for people to tell whether or not it's a box or not. <laughs> of course, or if it's yes. you. Uh, but, uh, of course, it doesn't work if anyone sees you putting it on. Yeah. I mean, I, that's kind of a weird thing. You, know, you just pull out a box and put it over your head and then shrink down into it, right? It does kind of make it harder to convince your foes that you were just a box. <laughs> now, it's a DC-12 uh, intelligence check mm -hmm. to actually conclude it's, you know, somebody in it or just a box. Right. But it does have this really cool adaptive box feature. Really simply, uh, basically, if you're in an area and you want to make it kind of look like the area, you can spend 10 minutes to kind of match the environment that it's in. <laughs> so if you, uh, you know, you're skulking around a kitchen like that, you can put it over your head with it, uh, and you have this adaptive box feature on it, you can appear as a box of oranges, for example. Yes, exactly. Um, but don't go sneaking into the weapons area as a box of oranges, because it's going to be like, what the heck? Yeah. So you get a plus five uh, to the DC if you're in an area that you're camouflaged as, and a negative five to it if you are, you know, out of place. Yes, so it is important to note, make sure you spend those 10 minutes to change out the look of your box, otherwise you're going to be easily caught in the area. Now, who made this one? Yeah, this one's from Welsh Grifter. Thank you so much for that one. And let's go to the next item here. Ah, the gold coin of mischief. Oh boy, short but classic. This one's from the Baby <laughs> Yeti, another common wondrous item. Essentially, it's a magical coin. Anytime a creature attempts to pick up this coin, it will magically roll just out of that creature's reach before stopping. It's, so... it's the, see, and I would make this as like a platinum coin. Oh know, yeah, something that looks right. very valuable. Very valuable, yeah. It's, it's, the, e uh, it's, the, it's the d d equivalent of, you know, the dollar bill on a string, right? <laughs> yes. um, but yeah. the idea here is that you've got this coin that you can just kind of throw out there, and, you know, it's a valuable coin. Someone can go chasing after, and it's always going to be ahead of them, no matter how much they do it. The only way to pick this coin up 
is to politely ask it if you can. Very good for that coin. That That's very uh, modern coin for you there, you know, yes. asking for consent. Um, yes. <laughs> also, a creature can also make a DC 26 dexterity check or sleight of hand if you have proficiency uh, to try and snatch the coin without it noticing. So it's, even if you want to try and catch it, it is very difficult to catch up with this coin. That's what we call smart money. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, the next one here is, this one's pretty simple. This is the calling card. Now, it, you, you're going to look at this and go, you're giving us a one-line item? Yes, we are, because we didn't think of it, and I went, huh, that's kind of cool. Yes. So what this is, it's a blank playing card uh, that you basically, you go and you tap it on the forehead of somebody, and you give it away. Yep. And Or, I mean, you keep it, or what have you. Whichever way you want to do it, you can tap it on your forehead and give it to somebody, I guess. And they're allowed to use the sending spell once per, uh, once per day to talk to that person. Very cool effect. It's really simple. And actually, when we were reading this, me and Tony were like, how come I didn't think of that? Right. It's a really creative way to kind of create this, like, instant communication. Nothing overpowered because it's simply a sending spell. Mm -hmm. But it's a really great tool, even if it's not just for a rogue. If you want to have a way to keep in touch with an NPC or another character, I think the calling card is a great item. I think it's wonderful. It's just, I, I would love to have, like, we have calling cards. We have our business cards. This is true, right? yeah. We, we, we hand them out everywhere, believe me. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, you know, just to be able to go, boop, and then give it to somebody and go, hey, if you, call, if you need me, call me. Yeah, it's the D&D QR code. It's it's also really good for bards with that, you know. Yes. It's the, it's the booty call card, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Just, Here you go, baby. You yeah. know, that kind of thing. Um, this last one, you're gonna you're gonna wonder why we're bringing this one up. Uh, by the way, that's by who? Uh, Lich zero zero for the calling card. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, this last one, a lot of people tend to confuse the rogue with the rouge. <laughs> Yes. You know, that, if you're not that careful weird. with your letters, you know, you might misplace it and you might get a little confused. Right, exactly. So this next one here is Marlowe's Lasting Lipstick. Yeah, so now, why would a rogue need lipstick? Yeah, very interesting item. Again, it is literally a stick of lipstick. When applied to any surface, the lipstick appears in bright red color. However, after exactly one hour, the applied lipstick changes in color to a shade of orange. Then another hour passes and it goes to gold, then to green, blue, violet, silver, and so on and so forth until it turns to a white color. One hour after turning to white, the applied lipstick vanishes entirely. Now, it, the marks left by this lipstick can only be erased, uh, on, you know, without going through that timer thing yeah. uh, by magical means. But what does this mean? This, I see this as a way of leaving thieves camp marks mm -hmm. on things or uh, being able to to tell. It's a great way of being able to tell time. You, may, you mark an X, you see how long it takes, or you know, every hour it changes a different color, and you've got this way to track time. Yeah, or like if you're stuck in like some sort of horrible realm where time is hopefully an existing thing here, you can kind of like mark something off with that lipstick and kind of keep track. It's a really interesting item, and I think it requires a little bit of extra IQ to try and use this one, but there's a lot of potential in this wondrous common item. Uh, this one's from Chromatic uh, Chocobo, so thank you for that. But again, really interesting one. Uh, definitely very much well, fits a rogue. See, and I think about that, right? You know, we're lost in a, in, a, in a place that we have no idea. Yeah. Like, okay, here's a great one. You're walking through the woods with that. You're lost in the woods. You mark a tree. Don't, don't worry, I have my lipstick. <laughs> you grab it, you mark the tree. You go wandering more. You can see how long it took you to find back to that tree. Yeah. It's just a great way of keeping track. So never forget your lipstick, folks. And actually, I was going to say, like, this could... I was just trying to think of another scenario. Like, let's <laughs> say, like, you're, you're trying to do this heist inside of this mansion or something, or, in, like, like, you're in the middle of a party, and you have a limited amount of time to do this. You put on that lipstick on yourself or something, you're basically kind of keeping track of it. Oh, crap, guys, we lost What like color are my lips? Yeah. What color are my lips? Exactly. I don't know. They're like silver. Oh, God, we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, precisely. You know, things like that. Uh, it, this is a great one here, and I, I really have enjoyed every single one of these that we've done. Now, we are going to continue to review these things. Uh, you know, here's the thing. They have to be funny. They have to be interesting. And there's a lot of stuff on D&D Beyond, right? So if you guys see something on D&D Beyond that you want us to uh, kind of look at and throw into one of these these sets, uh, definitely send it to us at dmbrucrew at gmail.com. Send us the link with it. We love funny things. Like... Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes some of the most simple things, some of the really simple items that have been featured on the channel are maybe just like one feature or maybe it was a little feature that we didn't think of. If there's ever been an item or an instance where your party thought of a really clever item or trick, be sure to leave us a comment down below. We love hearing about your little stories about your own campaigns as well. And remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are homebrewed. So until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.